Hey everybody, Richard Smith here. I am out at Swepsonville Methodist Church in Swepsonville, North Carolina. I'm going to be talking with Sue Partridge of Stone Soup Menu here in Swepsonville, North Carolina about what they do to help feed people in our area. I'm standing here in front of this angel uh, and it's just a, a, a silent reminder by looking at the statue of what we are supposed to do as Good Samaritans uh, that follow Christ and that is help others. And so by doing this here at Stone Soup Menu, they are out there feeding people that need the help or they're helping others. Uh, we're going to find out the story behind this great cause and what it takes to make it work. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, we are sitting here with Pastor Gordon Christian of uh, this wonderful church. It's beautiful. Uh, you guys do apparently a lot of things to help so many people. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit about you and, and your experiences here at the church and being what being a part of, of this nonprofit uh, means to you and your church. It's it's hard to put into words. The um, I moved here. I started serving here in 2019. So just before pandemic time, I got what about nine months in. And one thing we even realized in that time was um, Swepsonville is a place that's growing. This whole part of the state is one of the fastest growing places. And you can see in five years here, I can point out the new housing developments all over the place. Right. But there is not, uh, at least in Swepsonville, um, really a, a community center. And that's still, still a, a, an issue that I, I think a lot about and wonder a lot about. But one thing we said was, at that time, before any of this happened, was that Fellowship Hall is probably the biggest room in town other than the inside of the fire department, which is full of fire trucks. And we said, this is a huge asset for the church, but could also be a huge asset for the community. Right. And uh, it just so happened that um, someone came along right as the pandemic was uh, hitting who had this vision of wanting to cook for people at that time who were stuck inside during that that uh, experience, especially early on there, and and grew into this amazing and frugal organization taking uh, donated food, food that might go to waste, and and feeding people with it. Um, and so, for, from my perspective, Stone Soup itself is not officially religious in any way, but but. Here we are in the church. What a gift from God to, um, to take that idea, that potential, and turn it into something, especially in a moment of uh, a lot of fear and suffering and, and, and all sorts of things. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's the resurrection, <laughs> folks, right? right? I mean, um, and, and so to us, it, it is this sign of, of has been the thing we have held on to as we went through meeting online, meeting outside, is it safe to, you know, all through that journey, it was tied into the fact that this, we were still helping support something in this community. Right. I will also say, um, like a lot of churches, this church is, it's a small church, it's a small community, and it's a lot of older folks, and people do what they can and do an amazing amount, we never could have done this on our own. Right. And you'll find a lot of the people back there are not necessarily people who come here on Sunday. Some are. Um, but so it's a connection to the community. And then the other thing I'll say is when you have limited resources, this church is able to do a ministry, to serve God, to affect the community just by paying its light bill. Right? Just by paying the gas bill, you're paying for people to get fed. And that has been a gift to me. Right. Because when I look at the budget and say the numbers and encourage people to support the church, it's not just keep the lights on so I can see you when I'm <laughs> sitting around reading. It's keep the lights on, keep the gas flowing so these people can get fed. That is um, an immense gift, I think, to a small church. 
I think I've actually said this once or twice already in this film, but it, it's, I think it's one of God's greatest commandments that we help each other. That Certainly. We're, we're there, and, that, and that's what God wants us to do. That, that is, I believe, the first commandment, right? I believe. But uh, anyway, I mean, my commandments might be confused. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's got to be awesome. I mean, it really does. And being that stable, that, that foundation that yeah. is there for people in need, to, to help them and you're not just doing it for the, the little small town we're in you no. branched out through all of Alamance County mm -hmm. helping everyone that that needs help they, they can that, that calls on you guys that... yeah I mean it's um, the, I mean, you're, you're thinking of Jesus right it says love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself right. and, and on these things the whole of the law hangs right or right. depending on your translation but to me, it has always been also, going back all the way to the beginning of your Bible, people were made in the image of God. Right. And so to, to serve one another uh, is to show people that you believe that. Right. <laughs> You're made in the image of God. And, and the, the special thing about this is, I, I hope you'll get video, or probably already did, of the, the meals themselves. Mm -hmm. um, or there's certainly photos we can share. Oh yeah, we've got plenty of those, yeah. They're... Um, they're nutritious, they're full of fresh food, and when they put them on the plate, they try to make them look nice. Right. Presentation. Presentation. That is something special to not just say, here's some food for you, but here's something that we put some care into. Love and care. You, you deserve, no matter what your situation is, you deserve something to eat and something that some love was put into. And I think that makes a difference. I hope I know it makes a difference um, when that goes out there. That's awesome. That's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a wonderful feeling. Um, you, your church here. Uh, what do you guys do? I mean, you have services or? Yeah, we worship uh, 11 a.m. on Sundays it, here in Swepsonville. If if you look it up, the address is actually Graham because they consolidated the post office. But it's here in Swepsonville, 11 a.m. Sunday school before, and certainly um, stone soup here throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of an interesting, I don't want to take up too much time, but when I got here, they had had a clothing closet for many years, which, which is a great, incredible ministry. Um, and um, as, as we went through the pandemic and Stone Soup started up, some of the people said they weren't getting, not just weren't getting great uh, participation in that, but it, they just had that feeling you sometimes get, this has run its course. Mm -hmm. You know, that this, this, it's time to start something else. The door shutting and yeah. the door one's opening. Yeah. And, and Stone Soup was the door opening because now when I look at the ways this church serves the community along with worshiping God, which is the, the center of everything we do as a church, um, a little church, not, I mean, a, a, a tight knit, a, but pretty small community, uh, does a whole week of Meals on Wheels deliveries uh, every month. Uh, does, along with many churches in this area, uh, snack packs for kids to have food over the weekends at the elementary school. We do 10 of those, and uh, a good chunk of the uh, downstairs area also has that food ready. Um, and then Stone Soup. Those are really the big things. And then they do chair yoga, and we've got a choir, and people do other things as they come up. But I look at that and I say, uh, here's God leading us to really care about feeding people, which is one of the big things Jesus does, right? right. And so, um, and try to feed each other and, and love to eat together along the way, right? Well, I've made this comment about other things. Uh, it, it's important to have food on our stomachs to, to have mm -hmm. that strength because when you, when you start worrying about being hungry, mm -hmm. uh, that's a way for the devil to get in there, put some doubt in your mind, and it having that chance to have a full stomach is, is, is reinforcing and helping Christians stay stronger in yeah. their faith. And so it's a great, great tool to have. Um, there is a reason Jesus had a last supper. Right. There's a reason he, uh, uh, breaks the bread. And in that he's revealed to the disciples, is that on the road to Emmaus? Somewhere there. He has the breakfast on the beach. He multiplies the loaves. Um, and, and I think your point is a really interesting one. Um, and uh, is it, I think it's in Luke 
12, somewhere in there, there's the parable of the rich fool. Um, the, the man who has barns so full of grain that he tears them down to build another one. <laughs> he's so worried about not what he's just going to eat tomorrow, but the next day and the next day and the next day. And um, I always think of that, that we have things to share, and when you're full, you can share that with someone else. And, and to um, share the gifts you have, they, they multiply in themselves. And when you hold on to them, yeah. it's a little... Um, it's one of those things very important uh, for everybody. You know, we make sure, make sure that we have our stomach's full. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to say it again, uh, when, you, when you think of this program, if you've got a grandma or grandpa, then think of your grandma and grandpa and the fact that they could be getting the same help if they needed it. Uh, you're reaching out to your, your own grandparents uh, to help them out in a way. It's an it's a, uh, interesting way to look at it. Uh, sometimes we, we need to put a face on things mm -hmm. to get a better understanding of what they are. And visualizing your own grandparents uh, is a great way to do that. Um, is there anything else you want to add before uh, I let you get back to work? <laughs> and I want to say, I was a little surprised when I came around the corner. I was expecting a very older gentleman in his 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, and, and, and I'm like, you're the pastor, really? How old are you? Like, uh, 30, 32 years old. 32, um, yeah. I thought he was like coming out from high school or something. I mean, you're so young looking, but you have this great desire to, to serve God. And, and that's the important thing to remember that it's not really your age. It's, it's that, that desire and that, uh, that longing that God puts in your heart to do more, mm -hmm. and it's, it affects everybody from all ages, so it's great. That's exactly right. There have been, uh, I have my own two-year-old who runs around there sometimes. When you're, um, uh, at Stone Soup is this great image of you've got people of every age from all over the county and all over plenty of other places as well coming together. I mean, that's, that's what heaven looks like to me. Yeah, and so, cool. uh, so we can surprise each other a little. Right. So I'll give you that, I'll give you that chance. Anything else you want to add before we say goodbye? There is an enormous, and you have seen the amount of work, um, the amount of service and, and kind hearts that go into what we do here. And it is um, my blessing to support it personally, support it with my time, support it with my money. Um, and also to encourage the church I serve to support it. Um, whether or not you can do that, you can do something to feed someone. Not all food insecurity, and, and may, maybe you have neighbors who, who just need something to eat, and you can, you can probably do that. Um, but maybe... Uh, it would mean a lot to someone if you brought them food as a sign of something bigger. Um, food insecurity goes well beyond just hunger, pure hunger. There are people who are uh, lonely and, and always eat alone. There are people who, uh, like we're talking about, always eat, only eat out of cans. And it would mean a lot to have something that someone prepared on a plate. Um, there are people who work two jobs to feed their family, and that means the, the food their family gets isn't always, they aren't always able to put that love in. Um, we all can do something to feed one another. And that's something I've learned here, and I've learned that um, that we all have something to share. Yeah. That uh, I can see your Amazing love and thing. passion. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's 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 bulging out everywhere, man. You got the passion for it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Passion for Christ. Yeah. Amen. Uh, um, yeah. So it's. I would never be naive enough to say we can, we can end hunger, unfortunately, in this world until until we get to the next. Right. But, um. But the chance to serve one another, Jesus says. Um, is a chance to meet him. Right. When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Right. But that's a chance we all have every day. Awesome. That's beautiful. <laughs> Pastor, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Well, thank you it. all very much. Uh, we're going to, uh, 
we're going to actually go out on a ride with one of your drivers into one of the houses and and show people what exactly wow. your driver does and, and how they affect someone's life. And I'm looking forward to that. But thank you so much. I thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. Guys, I'd like to introduce y'all to a young lady that is a very important, has a very important role here. Uh, this is Valerie. Valerie, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here. Um, my name is Valerie Albert and I am called the kitchen manager. Okay. Um, we have a very dedicated group of volunteers, all strong-minded women, so being the <laughs> kitchen manager can be hard. <laughs> right. And we've been an organization for, uh, I believe, three years now, maybe going on four, organized during COVID for people that either can't cook or don't have transportation to go and get food. And we work three days a week. Monday is prep day, Tuesday is cook day, and Thursday is pack and deliver day. So it's, it's been interesting. I'm retired from LabCorp. And ever since I retired, I've been involved with food in one way or another. I like to say some ladies like Shoes, some ladies like pocketbooks, I like food. <laughs> mm, lady after my own heart. Um, what does it mean to you to be a part of this? I mean, it's got to be a great feeling. It is a good feeling. Um, when we pack a healthy, attractive meal, I'm proud. Mm. And uh, I hope that we don't, we don't really interact with the clients, but on occasion we get a little bit of feedback from them. And when they say that was the best barbecue I've ever had, or one year a lady made us all bead bracelets and necklaces and sent them back to us, and that just touches your heart, makes you feel like you're doing something. Right. It's nice to see, I'm sure. Um, is there anything else you would like to add before we uh, talk to someone else? We're a small group, but, and actually a very small group and we we need this type of thing to get better known in the community right. um, we have a small budget but and second harvest and uh, another company are good benefactors but we need a lot of donations right and you're the one that gets gets the job done, right? You get her done. <laughs> I heard the cats that get her done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I appreciate everything you're doing. You're doing a great job. And Thank you. And helping so many people. And, and, well, we're and, looking forward to working with Applebee's. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. Guys, I am sitting here with Donna Poe. Donna, you, uh, what is your job title here at uh, this place? <laughs> Um, so at any given moment, I have several different titles. Um, okay. Today, I'm kind of the, the director of uh, the drivers as the drivers come in. Um, I help lead the, the packing of the meals. I help, I'm involved with the prepping. I'm also, I'd say, the director uh, for the clients. Um, as we receive client referrals, I'm the one that takes the phone calls and, and explains to the client that I'll call the client, explain to them what Stone Soup Menus is all about and what, what we plan to do and how we can help them. I know you're really busy, but I want to give you a second just to explain to our viewers what sure. this means to you, how it makes you feel, anything you might want to add right now. Yeah. So this, um, I consider this a ministry. Um, it's truly blessed and purposed by God. And I came here, I was led to come help um, primarily just to, to provide uh, uh, produce from a community garden that I also run um, in Alamance County. And so I started that way. I'd heard about Stone Soup Menus needing um, food to help provide these meals to folks that were of need. And that's how I began. And then I saw a need for drivers to help deliver those meals. So I started driving. And then I saw a need to help organize those drivers. So I just kind of jumped in helping with that. And here I am today just kind of um, coordinating and helping wherever I can. It's got to so. be a great feeling. It's uh, we, amazing. We appreciate everything yeah. you're doing yeah. to help so many people here in Alamance yeah. County. Thank you. Yeah. And I think what's so amazing about it, too, is that there's so many moving parts, as you saw just today, and today's just Thursday, we're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, doing all different types of you know, pieces to put these meals together, 
And then we start over again next week. Right. It's a continuously. <laughs> it's over like doing a wedding day. or a big church event every week. Right. So, yeah. Well, Donna, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for your Absolutely. time. Absolutely. We'll let you go and get back to work. Okay. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Richard Smith here. I am at Swetsonville Methodist Church in Swetsonville, North Carolina. I am sitting here with Sue Partridge. Uh, Sue, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for coming. Um, we are going to ask the question and get the answers of what is Southern Soup Menu um, today. So we're going to take a lot of pictures, we're going to walk, walk through some of this stuff, and, and we're going to explain to the folks that are watching what this is. Uh, first, I'd like to get a little history. Uh, so you are using the partridge here at the church um, to, to prepare your meals. Uh, what part does the church have in this? Uh, so Stone Soup Menus is a 501c3 um, nonprofit organization, um, and we partner with the church um, to, uh, who allows us to come in here multiple days a week to cook meals, to prepare, um, and then to, um, to serve them um, to out into, into the community. Awesome. Um, so uh, how long have y'all been doing this? Um, well, the organization was created in 2020 um, during COVID. Um, you know, food was an issue obviously before COVID, but certainly became more of an issue during COVID. And the founders decided that, um, that there was a niche that we could fill um, to help people um, fill their bellies. Um, so we started in 2020 and um, we still continue today. Uh, give me a... a a field of when you started how many people did you start serving compared to where you are now we started off really low numbers like really small like 20 25 people and now we've grown up to about 125 households a week um, we right now have a have a, a set sort of a limit based on our volunteer base and based on our financials um, uh, of about 140 about 140 and and these these uh, meals when you take them out that's it's going out once a week to two folks yes um, we get together and we uh, plan the meals we cook the meals um, uh, we box them and they are then delivered each Thursday All right, okay on Thursdays um, you also get some help possibly from other organizations that may help but let's give them a shout out who, who would we want to thank absolutely we could not be successful without our partners and we have quite a few that we'd really love to uh, to highlight. Um, first and foremost is Chick-fil-A and Mebane. Um, they are incredible and we get a lot of food about a hundred pounds a week from them um, and we're very grateful for that. Um, we also get food from um, the United Methodist Church at Concord. Um, they have a community garden and they grow fresh um, food for us and donate it um, and for that we are really grateful. Um, Mount Air Chicken also um, provides us um, with boxes of chicken that, um, that we are able to cook and use in our menus each week. Um, and then we also um, really rely on Second Harvest out in Greensboro um, for our uh, meat and also um, vegetables. Um, we've taken some, I'll take some pictures of some of your plates that are going out and we're going to show those, but, uh, your, your plates are kind of big. I mean, if we're talking, um, 60, 70 year old person, obviously they can't eat that whole plate. So the idea is to. Yeah, we prepare, um, five meals a week, um, for folks. Um, we put them in two boxes. So each box, um, is, is basically two meals. And then um, historically we've done a soup each week and now we're experimenting with not necessarily doing a soup every week. Okay. So five meals um, uh, that should feed, um, that should serve for two, two separate meals um, and, and that's what goes out each week. So they can take some of these meals, put them in a the refrigerator, save them for another day, uh, split it in half, give it to their spouse, whatever. Yes. And that it's just not one meal. I want to stress right. that. You're, you're providing food for several days. Right. Time. It's it is five meals um, per week, um, home cooked, um, using as much as we can fresh um, vegetables, um, fresh meat. Um, we really, um, what sets us aside from other organizations is that it is these are meals that we would be really happy to put in front of our families, um, using the freshest uh, goods that we can that we can get, 
and thankfully we we have organizations that help us fulfill that mission that's awesome i took some pictures of some of the fruit some of the food uh the watermelon looked delicious i'm telling you made my mouth water uh it looks like it's all really great quality high, high quality food that you're yes. giving out to people um the the age range from people that may benefit from this is is from what to what right um, we serve primarily older people. More than 60% of our recipients are above the age of 60. Um, we do have some younger, but primarily um, it's, it's older people. Um, our criteria are people who um, don't have access to transportation, who are unable to make their meals, um, primarily elderly and disabled, um, and, and, and have to live within Alamance. Awesome. Uh, you have a website, right? I want to throw that up here for people to see we do. where we get going. What is that website? Uh, Stone Soup Menus Inc. Okay. Dot and, org. So, got to put the ink on there. Yes. Dot org. Yes. Okay. Um, you're also on Facebook. I know that. I've liked yes. you guys and following you. Yes. Uh, if you get a chance to do that, look them up on Facebook. Uh, hit answer. the like button or follow whatever it says. Uh, keep up with them and what they're doing. Um, you, you really have a great setup in there. I mean, I, I, the three stoves right there beside each other, lots of cooking going on. Uh, tell me about what your your procedure is like from, well, let's, let's go to the beginning. When people want to find out or, or inquire about getting help from you, mm -hmm. uh, how does that work? Do you go through agencies? Do they come in, walk in? Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Um, we, uh, they can come to us um, multiple ways. Um, a lot of our recipients get referred to us by social services or um, Meals on Wheels um, because uh, unfortunately everybody has a cap um, and we um, are able to help fill some of that niche um, mm -hmm. until unless other organizations can, can come in. Um, we also get it from family members. We also get it from um, from within the community. So anybody who's interested could go to our website um, and and or or um, or contact uh, the church. Okay. Is there an application process on the website that they can go through? There is not an application process. Um, we actually will have um, one of our volunteers. Um, uh, directly communicate with them and get them enrolled or um, or figure out what what they need okay uh, that's how i got in contact with them i saw a video on facebook uh that someone was doing about the uh, sylvan um, mm -hmm. club helping you guys out with some donations yeah uh found the facebook page sent her a message and uh, got in contact with them that way so if you there's several ways you can get in contact with them if you need help so yes. please reach out to them and let them know um now, as far as how you prepare your meals, walk us through the process of like how that starts and, and everything that goes through that. Um, so so uh, each week uh, we have a group of, um, of our kitchen staff, so cooks and um, preps, and we take a look at what we have. Um, so for example, this week we got 50 pounds of potatoes, we got a lot of hamburgers, and we kind of look at what's in the refrigerator or what we are getting from, from, um, from our food sources, and we say, uh, we plan a meal backwards from there. Um, most people will decide what they're going to eat and then go buy ingredients. We have to back engineer it. Um, and we do our best to make sure there's no waste. Um, we also... Um, work to compost everything and recycle anything any of the, any, any of the um, leftovers but um, but we plan the meal um, and then uh, we're all three meals and then we basically make assignments for the kitchen folks um, Monday is prep day so we do nothing but chop and we prepare everything Tuesday is cook day so we come in for several hours and, and we will bake the chicken or we will break bake the frittata um, we will pull together the stir fry and cook it all and then um, there, we have a new group that's, um, that we're trying to form on Wednesdays who will also come in and do anything um, left over from Tuesday, so cooking and prep. Um, and then Thursday, everything gets plated, and then we have a dedicated uh, driver, uh, driver volunteers who come in and pick up the meals and then deliver them to our clients. Uh, I was looking at some of your... Uh your bags of food for certain people that are, are really, really desperately in need of, of help. Um, yes. the, you, you guys cover a large area. What is the, the breadth of your area that you cover? Um, anyone within Alamance is eligible. Um, and, uh, and 
so we have drivers that are assigned you know based on um, sort of clusters of, ho of houses so we can try to cover alamance so they don't make a lot of return trips or right. they're getting everybody when they go right. out and saving a little bit of money and gas your 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 folks that help you out uh, they're volunteers, right? We are all volunteers. Um, everyone, everyone who who um, who serves is a volunteer, including our bookkeeper. Um, so we are really, really blessed. But but everything that we do is is really um, because we have incredible volunteers. And you had a, a really big age bracket in there trying to help out. I mean, I saw young people, teenagers. Yeah. You got the older folks, of course, that are retired. I'm sure. Yes. Uh, so I mean, it, every walk of life uh, as far as age goes that's right. uh, is in there helping out and it, it's a great thing it's it's what god calls us to do yes we are to help each other yes and by providing this food you are fulfilling what god asked us to do that's right um so uh we walk through the days uh we, we're taking the food out to the mm -hmm. young folks or the, the people that are in need um uh, before i forget i know there's someone else that you mentioned to me that that we want to acknowledge, uh, and that is uh, safe. Safe, yes. Um, so we also could not, um, we could not um, be successful without Safe. Um, safe is uh, another uh, organization in in Alamance that um, that is a food pantry. But they, uh, we work together to pick up food from Second Harvest. Um, we get referrals from them. If we have leftover, um, if we have leftovers, or if they have leftover food, then um, then we make sure that that, that food is used. Um, the Concord Gardens also helps supply safe, um, and so it, it is really another pillar of um, in our, within the community to, to meet um, you know food insecurity needs. I've seen the structure in my mind because I I know of all these nonprofits that are out there doing this, and you're all working together. Uh, as, as a joint effort basically to help feed Amish County. It's, it's not just one, one nonprofit doing it, it's you're all teaming up, filling in the gaps, uh, helping wherever there is a need for help. That's right. And that's, that's people working together for a, a great cause. That's right. Um, I'm sure when your folks take the food out, uh, they're going to visit with them a little bit, maybe check on them, make sure they're okay. Uh, how, tell me some of the stories that you may have about that. Yes, um, so many of our drivers, um, uh, this is their ministry um, to the community, and so, um, uh, so they will essentially deliver the meals. It is kind of a wellness check at the same time, um, and, and sometimes, um, for, particularly for our elderly, disabled folks, um, that is their connection with the community each week, and so they do see it as a ministry, and they do spend a little bit of time um, making sure that, that that the folks are okay and that, you know, that they've had someone who, who cares check in with them and, and provide that meal. That's got to be a great feeling for, for not only your organization, but the volunteers that help out. That's right. Um, going back to your point um, a moment ago, you know, 17% 70, of people living in Alamance have food insecurity issues. So the need is extremely great. And, you know, we do what we can to fulfill the niche that we are able to, but there are a lot of organizations that are out there and and still the need is really great. And so, um, you know, everybody doing a little bit really makes makes a difference for people um, because nobody deserves to go hungry. Right. I appreciate that. Uh, it's a great thing you guys are doing. So I personally started volunteering about a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, I'm just really, I'm really humbled by the fact that we have so many people who want to make a difference in people's lives. And for our organization alone, from, from January through the end of May this year, we have prepared um, and packed and delivered 17,000 meals, which is huge for a, a, you know, a volunteer corps, including our drivers of 55 people um, and a relatively small budget. Um, so, you know, we are always looking for volunteers. We are always looking for donations to help um, because the need is there. And, um, and this is just a, a really fantastic organization making a difference in the way that we can. Um, that's a good point. How can people donate to you? What, what process, how does, how does it work? Yes, um, uh, if you hit our website, um, we have a PayPal account. Um, you could contact the church if you would like to do that. Um, we have Venmo um, that's, um, 
that's a, that's an option. Um, you know, contact us and, and, you know, in whatever way you would like to um, volunteer, whether it's your hands, whether it's your time, whether it's driving, whether it's, um, it's donations, um, we would love to work with you. So, Sue, so, uh, I know you guys survive mainly on um, the goodwill of people, donations, uh, things like that to help you guys keep going. Uh, donations for food, donations for money, so forth. But, yeah, I think um, we were talking about uh, doing some fundraising for you guys, maybe some events and things like that that may, in your future, that may help you guys out. Um, anyone that wants to help out, maybe, uh, what would they need to do? Please contact me. I would love to work with you. Um, I would totally love to work with you on, on, on pursuing some opportunities. That's awesome. So give her a call, uh, set up a fundraiser with her, maybe plan, uh, plot it out, figure out what you want to do and help raise money. And awareness uh, is a big thing. Uh, helping uh, raise awareness for this calls and what they do is, uh, is going to help more than anything else. Word of mouth, talking about it, sharing it on Facebook, doing all those things to help uh, this great organization uh, build and keep going to help more and more people that need it. Uh, our elderly and the senior citizens, you know, I'm getting close to that myself. So helping them out, it, just picture helping your grandma or grandpa out. Picture an organization that you want to step in and help you with your grandma or grandpa. And, and picture that in your mind, give them a call, talk to them and help set something up. Hey guys, I am out here with two of the delivery drivers that I'm gonna be working with today following. Uh, Rob and Sandy Hawkins. Uh, guys, this has got to be a great feeling for y'all to be a part of this. Hey, tell me a little bit about your history. What, how long have you been doing this? Well, first of all, it is very satisfying. You know, it feels very good. Um, it's a great, great um, community service that Stone Soup provides, and we love it. Um, I've been doing this, over, I guess, over a year. Yeah. yeah I just started out because I wanted to do something, volunteer in the community, and the person that I knew happened to be working here. So, yeah, she Word of up. And then my husband started helping me, and she now we're- She you along? No. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're a team. It was kind of mutual, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you're, team, you're, you're tag teaming, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go visit uh, someone that you're gonna be delivering to, uh, to, to talk to them and mm -hmm. get what it feels. So we're gonna go jump in the truck. You guys ready? I'm ready. ready. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> hey folks, I am sitting here with Mr. Gabriel, who uh, is a recipient of the meals that are given out by uh, Stone Soup uh, Menu. Uh, Mr. Gabriel, what does this mean to you? How does this help you in, in any way uh, through your process? Oh, it's a blessing. Um, first of all, it, the meals almost come second. Um, the couple that delivers my meals, Sandy and Rob, um, I, as well as my dog, get so excited to see them every week. So it's not just food, it's a social experience. So the, believe it or not, a lot of people are cooped up in their houses that have disabilities, which I do. And you look forward to that so, uh, socialization. Um, the food itself is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a big burden off my food bill. Um, and, and the food, it's, it's just delicious. Uh, you just can't beat it. And so uh, I'm very uh, thankful that uh, Stone Soup got me involved in their program. Awesome, that's great. I know when we pulled up, uh, they, they got your mail out for you, they grabbed the trash cans and brought it up. Um, it was like you were being visited by old friends yeah. that you knew that, that, that cared and gave you a lot of love and time. Um, yeah to help you out. I'm sure that's a great blessing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I have a big uh, Bernadoodle dog, Yogi, and he gets more excited than I do. <laughs> he knows after Sandy calls me, tells me they're on their way. Yogi knows that as soon as I say they're on, uh, it, it's Sandy, he, he runs to get his collar on and me and him have to wait by the front door. Yeah, so, I, saw, I saw you sitting there at the front door. It's, yeah. it's an event, yes. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add? Any, anything you'd like for people to know? Um, just if you're in a situation, um, let's say being disabled, which I am, 
first of all, don't, don't feel hesitant to reaching out for help for people. Because I, I had such an ego and pride that I thought, no way I, I'm going to ask anybody for anything. And then after a while, you, you start to understand that I do need help. And there are so many people out there that want to help, but you have to let them in. And as soon as I kind of raised my hand and said I need help to Stone Soup, uh, they were there the next day. It, it was fantastic. So I recommend anybody um, that's out there that's not, that does need help, reach out. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. They're fantastic people with fantastic food. And uh, it, it's much more than just the food, trust me. Right. This fellowship that you, you have with the, with, the, with the people there. Yes. Uh, I appreciate you letting me talk to you real quickly and uh, getting your input on this. Thank sure. you so much. I wish the best to you. Thank you. Yeah, don't forget, if you need help, don't feel, don't feel bad. Reach out, let them know, and uh, get some great help when you need it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. I'm just waiting for them to put lobster on the menu. There you go. Uh, they, they haven't reached that point yet. <laughs> Maybe one day, one yeah. day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm.